Eve initially may have been looked at as just another MC from the city that also produced the likes of Will Smith, Beanie Siegel, and Lisa Left Eye Lopez, but as she came up in the late 90s with a super short platinum colored do and paw print tattoos across her chest, she was determined to be a standout voice of her generation and a force to be reckoned with in the hip hop world. Eve's mother was only 17 years old when she brought her daughter into the world. Born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, her mother raised Eve as a single parent, while her father came in and out of her life periodically. Her first musical interest was actually singing, so she started out in choirs and then became part of an all-female vocal group called Dope Girl Posse around the age of 12. I actually was interested in singing before rapping. I started singing first. I was, I was always in like the school choir when I was little. Um, and yeah, I think it's not until like ABC came out that I was like, oh, that's, I wanna do that. Like I really want, I think rapping is my thing. After Eve graduated high school, she began working as a stripper at the age of 18. She didn't last very long though. It was two months and I was the laziest stripper around. I would literally say, look, I could give you a lap dance, but I'm better at rapping. <laughs> One night, Mace came walking in. I didn't even know who he was. He's asking my name. I'm like giving up fake names or whatever. And he's like, no, I know you're not supposed to be here. He's like, what do you want to do? And I was like, I rap. And he's like, let me hear you rap. And he did, and he was like, yeah, he's like, if that's what you're trying to do, you shouldn't be here. Eve's manager called her up one day and told her that the ANR executive from Death Row Records was coming into town. He asked her if she was interested in auditioning for him. She absolutely was, and by the time she got through just one verse and the hook, the exec knew he'd found a gem. He gave her two weeks to get her bags packed and make her way over to LA so she could record a proper demo. As soon as Death Row founder Dr. Dre heard it, he immediately signed her. While signed to Dre's Aftermath Entertainment label, Eve, going by the name Eve of Destruction, appeared on the Bullworld soundtrack, as well as being featured on DMX's song, Rough Riders Anthem Remix, and the Roots single, You Got Me. Then things came to a grinding halt. The reason had everything to do with Dre adding a new male rapper to his label's roster named Eminem. I mean, I remember when I was working with Dre that Eminem did get signed. There's nobody out there that's even close to what he's doing. So I would literally show up to studio sessions that I wasn't supposed to be at, where I knew Dre was gonna be and be like, so when am I recording? When are you gonna put me on a song? What's going on? <laughs> and I think he got sick of that. And then I got dropped eight months later. Enter Jimmy Iovine, co-founder and chairman of Interscope Records. He ended up having a chat with Dre and told him that since he was clearly too busy with his other artists, he should send Eve over to Rough Riders, a management company who started its own label imprint through Interscope. Before she knew it, Eve, or as she called herself, a pit bull in a skirt, became the first lady of Rough Riders. Eve's debut solo single, What Y'all Want, featuring Nokio of Drew Hill, was released in June 1999. It peaked at number 29 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart and captured the top spot on the Hot Rap Songs chart. At this point, Eve decided to let the Of Destruction part of her handle go and just be herself. Her debut album called Let There Be Eve, Rough Riders First Lady was released that fall. It went two times platinum and features the singles Got A Man and another song that went to number one on the Hot Rap Songs chart, Love Is Blind. The latter track was written by Eve as a poem when she was 16 about her best friend that was the same age as her engaged in an abusive relationship with a 35 year old man later becoming pregnant. All of the songs on the album in fact were written by Eve herself. She became the third female hip hop artist to have her album peak at number one on the Billboard 200 behind Lauryn Hill's The Miseducation of Lauryn Hill and Foxy Brown's China Doll. When asked if she ever felt frustrated constantly being referred to as a female rapper, Eve didn't hold back. She told Stereo Gum in 2021, I never wanted to just be good for a female. I always wanted to be a good MC, period. And back then it was always, oh, you're good even for a female. A guy said to me, I listen to you. I usually don't listen to female MCs, but for a female, you're good. For a girl, you're good. It's like, shut up. It was so annoying. 
Eve experienced more number one success when she was featured on Missy Elliott's single, Hot Boys Remix. The song broke the record for most weeks at number one on the R&B chart. It also spent 18 weeks at number one on the Hot Rap Singles chart. Years later, Eve would reflect on the sisterhood she had looked forward to being a part of in the male-dominated field of hip-hop. She quickly found out, though, that it wasn't like that at all. She recalls a time where she would run up to another female rapper she admired, telling them how much she loved their work and suggesting they do something together, only to be met with a bunch of negativity. One woman in the game that definitely had no interest in building a sisterhood with Eve was Foxy Brown. Things apparently got kicked off when Eve levied some thinly veiled disses at Foxy and Lil' Kim on her tracks 2001's Let Me Blow Your Mind and 2002's Double R What, where she criticized the two for having Ghost Riders. Foxy fired back via her unreleased record Get Off Me, comparing Eve to a Yorkie Terrier and dubbing her a jealous bum Eve later responded to Foxy's diss, stating that she was glad she could be an inspiration for her ghostwriter, and dubbed her a wankster and a miserable jealous bitch. Foxy then revealed in an interview with Wendy Williams that she hated Eve, and the main reason why was Foxy believed Eve had snitched about her alleged affair with DMX causing her breakup with then-boyfriend, Corrupt. Someone Eve did end up befriending in the business was Keisha Cole. That is, until Keisha started to exhibit some behavior that just didn't sit well with Eve and caused her to separate herself from the R&B singer. Keisha touched on what happened in her TV One Uncensored episode. It was a thing that happened with Eve that, you know, we walking out and somebody grabbed her bag or something like that. and. You know, I just kind of turned around and slapped the girl. You know, it's like, girl, what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? Like, period. Like, back up, you know? And, and Eve is really pissed off about that. Like, we stopped hanging out. Like, she was like, I, I can't hang with Keisha. Like, she can't be slapping people. And I was like, wait, I'll slap somebody for you. What the f is this? But then it taught me a lot too later, too, because, you know, even being who I am t today, because she gets sued, too. You know what I'm saying? Me being a part of her crew walking out the club, but I just, you know, I should have left that to security. Somebody gets paid for that, you know what I mean? In the midst of all the success she was experiencing in her professional life, things weren't going that great in Eve's personal life. At that time, I was also in a relationship that was very toxic, that was not working. Can you guys uh, wait the camera here? It's a jail camera. <laughs> she was in a relationship with another producer, Stevie J, and she would tell me she wasn't happy. It wasn't good because here is it, this person I thought was the love of my life was just so unsupportive. There's just so much competition. I went through a depression. I was drinking a lot, a lot, and trying to bury emotions, I think. Eve's man may not have been supportive of her career aspirations, but he sure didn't have a problem enjoying the perks that came along with it, like being all up in her Who's That Girl music video. The couple also appeared in another video together during their relationship of the X-rated variety. A tape of the couple made the rounds on the internet right when Eve's career was taking off. They both deny leaking it themselves. She spoke to MTV in 2012 about how the situation made her feel and how she handled it. When that happened, sex tapes weren't hot like that and I got the FBI involved. So that's not something I wanted to happen. I respect my mother and my family, and that's not something I am okay with. And it hurt my heart that anyone who was in my circle, whether it be him or anybody else, it hurt my heart that that went out there. That wasn't my thing. Eve's second studio album, Scorpion, dropped in 2001. Who's That Girl, the lead single, did moderately well, peaking at number 47 on the Billboard Hot 100. The second single, though, Let Me Blow Your Mind, with Gwen Stefani of No Doubt, ended up being a smash hit, rising all the way to number two on the Hot 100. The song also won a Grammy for Best Rap Song Collaboration, and Eve also picked up an additional nomination for Best Rap Album. Evolution, her third studio album, was released a year and a half later. The first single, Gangsta Lovin' with Alicia Keys, became her second consecutive number two hit on the pop chart. 2002 was also the year Eve branched out into acting, starting out on the big screen in the action film Triple X, 
as well as the dramedy film Barbershop. She would go on to participate in many other films over the years, including the Barbershop sequels in 2004 and 2016. In 2003, Eve starred in the lead role in her own sitcom named after her. It aired for three seasons on UPN. She now says that the end of the show was heartbreaking, and she admits that the reason probably had a lot to do with her trying to straddle both sides of her life. It didn't work trying to be the professional actor who had to be on set early in the morning while simultaneously being a party girl, staying up until all hours of the night. Eve returned the favor to Gwen Stefani for appearing on her song, Let Me Blow Your Mind, and became a featured artist on Gwen's track, Rich Girl in 2005. It became a top 10 pop hit and received a Grammy nomination. After not being heard from on her own for a while, Eve came back in 2007 with her top 40 pop, top 20 R&B, and top 10 rap hit, Tambourine. A few months later, it was followed up with Give It To You. Both tracks were slated to be included on her next album that was in the works at the time. Unfortunately, due to a series of delays that had everything to do with tensions between her and her label, the project never saw the light of day. She eventually left Interscope and signed with EMI, hoping to finally get her next album out, but more setbacks prevented that from happening. In the spring of 2010, Eve made another epic feature on the remix of Ludacris' hit song, My Chick Bad, along with Diamond and Trina. In 2012, Eve decided the wait had been long enough and she was going to release her long-awaited album independently. The first official single, Make It Out This Town, featuring Gabe Saporta of Cobra Starship, was released in February 2013. A follow-up track called Eve also dropped a few months later. Lip Lock, Eve's fourth album, was released under her own label from The Rib Music in May 2013. In 2017, she became the new permanent co-host on the CBS daytime talk show, The Talk. Eve came back to music in 2019 when she released her first single in six years titled Reload, featuring Jamaican dancehall artist Conscience. The following year, after a three-year run, Eve announced that she would be leaving the talk at the end of the year due to the impending lockdown restrictions preventing her from returning to the U.S. and plans to expand her current family. In the spring of 2021, it was announced that Eve was to join the cast of ABC's musical drama series, Queens. Even though the show premiered that fall to largely positive reviews, it was canceled in early 2022 after one season. Eve began dating British fashion designer, businessman, and race car driver Maximilian Cooper in 2010 after meeting him in London at an event for his car rally company, Gumball 3000. She got invited to participate that year by one of the sponsors and agreed to do it. She admits that even though she wasn't looking for a relationship, she was immediately intrigued and wanted to get to know everything about him from that moment forward. She was traveling quite extensively at that time, so their relationship was long distance for a while, with them relying on communicating through their phones and sporadic get-togethers when she had European tour dates. Things didn't get super serious until Eve moved to London, so they could really put things in perspective. Max also has four children from a previous marriage, and Eve's confessed she was skeptical about whether or not she really wanted to be with a man with so many children. And of course, they couldn't ignore the race factor. Max had never dated a black woman before, so Eve spent a lot of time educating him and his children about her experiences as a woman of color. When we first got together, he thought I was high maintenance because of how often I changed my hair. I had to say, no, I'm a black woman. This is not high maintenance. This is part of the culture. In the end, it all worked out because as she fell in love with him, she automatically fell in love with the kids. The couple became engaged in December 2013 and married the following summer in Ibiza, Spain. Eve now divides her time between London, Los Angeles, and New York. After struggling with infertility issues for years, her and her husband welcomed their first child, a son, on February 1st, 2022.